Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Council of Representatives Speaker, Fazia Sanal, on the issuance of the Royal Order adjourning the third session of the fifth legislative term. On behalf of all the lawmakers, Zainal paid tribute to His Majesty the King, hailing his royal support to the legislative branch of government, a democratic milestone which represents one of the fruits of the reform projects initiated by His Majesty the King. In the cable, the Speaker praised His Majesty's support of the Council of Representatives for the benefit of the Kingdom and its people. She reiterated loyalty to His Majesty the King and the nation and pledged to continue unwavering efforts to further development and prosperity, wishing His Majesty abundant health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh Al Saleh, upon the conclusion of the third session of the fifth legislative term. Al Saleh extended thanks and appreciation on his behalf, as well as that of the Shura members to His Majesty the King, for his constant support in the interests of the Kingdom and its people and its democratic course. He renewed loyalty to His Majesty and looked forward to bringing further development and prosperity, praying for His Majesty's ongoing health. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 27 of 2021, appointing Dr Salman Ahmed Ibrahim Al Mahari, Director of Antiquities and Museum at Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a cable of thanks from the Council of Representatives Speaker, Fazia Sanal and the issuance of a royal order adjourning the third session of the fifth legislative term. On behalf of the members of the Representatives Council, Zainal expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his support which contributed to creating productive and constructive cooperation between executive and legislative authorities to further develop the Kingdom in all fields. Zainal affirmed that the stances and directors of His Royal Highness reflect his keen interest and that achievements made through the approval of several draft laws reflect the keenness of His Royal Highness in implementing the goals of His Majesty the King's reform project. The Council Speaker wished His Royal Highness abundant health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a cable of thanks from the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, of the conclusion of the third session of the fifth legislative term. Al Saleh extended thanks and appreciation on his behalf, as well as that of the Shura members, to His Royal Highness's efforts to ensure their operation between the legislative and executive authorities in the interests of the Kingdom and its people, and its democratic course. He praised the cooperation between the two authorities to enhance the achievements of the Kingdom, which affirm His Royal Highness's keenness to achieve the Royal Vision, wishing His Royal Highness ongoing health. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fazir Zanal, extended thanks and appreciation to His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, over the conclusion of the third session of the Fifth Legislative Council. She affirmed that His Majesty's support represents the inspiration for the Kingdom's achievements in all fields. She extended thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well, and affirmed that the continuation of the cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fazia Zanal, affirmed that the patronage and support of His Majesty the King to the Bahraini press and media has formed the foundation for the development of the Kingdom through the freedom of speech and expression. She affirmed that Bahrain has provided constitutional and legal rights to protect the freedom of speech for journalists and media figures, according to the National Action Charter. She also hailed the role of the Information Ministry and the National Communication Centre. On the occasion of the Bahraini Press Day, she expressed her congratulations to all journalists in the Kingdom. She also affirmed the parliamentary support to the national press and to the Bahraini Journalists Association. The Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh chaired the first extraordinary meeting of the Council virtually, where he expressed pride in the contributions of the national press and the Bahraini Press Day. The Council approved a report on combating money laundry and amending the laws that govern commercial enterprises. It also reviewed the government's annual fiscal report. The Minister of Information, Ali Al-Ramehi, was received by his Saudi counterpart in Mecca. 
Arun Mehi affirmed that the bilateral ties are based on the strength of the relationship between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and the two friendly peoples and their shared history. The minister expressed pride in Saudi Arabia's keenness and coordinating with Bahrain in the field of media as per the recommendations of the Joint Saudi-Bahraini Coordination Council as headed by the Royal Highnesses, the Crown Princes of Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. The meeting affirmed the ongoing cooperation between the two countries in all levels that relate to the field of media. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 759,975 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 558,531 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 11,778 with 1,034 recoveries, 1,450 registered new cases. 528 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 903 are contacts of active cases and 19 are travel related. The Ministry announced two deaths from COVID-19 and expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus. And now we turn to the public health doctor, Dr Mohamed Alawadi, to tell us more about the necessary precautions for the coming period. Assalamu alaikum, good evening everyone. Uh, thank you very much for having me today and I do understand that it's quite important that we have this discourse um, with the Eid gatherings coming up and with end of Ramadan coming up and I do understand that a lot of people are socially fatigued and they feel that they have to see their elderly grandpa, grandpa or their aunt or uncles and that's quite understandable. Um, but at the same time, if you look at the numbers, and I'm very proud of how Bahrain is quite transparent about all the numbers that we have, and uh, by by the great leadership that we have in Bahrain, we have covered major, major numbers in vaccinations. But at the same time, sadly, numbers of community transmission have increased lately, um, mainly, mainly due to family member family gatherings and gatherings of all sorts. And therefore, I think it's quite substantial that we understand this risk, we do measure this risk, and we take action and responsibility by not mixing family groups, not mixing uh, social groups, uh, try to keep the gathering within the same single family, uh, do not mix it with other family members uh, to not uh, spread the infection from one family to another, even though the vaccination does help even though the vaccination does increase, uh, sorry, does decrease the, uh, and limit the infection and spread of infection, but we have to be careful around those who are vulnerable, especially those elderly people do take the necessary precautions, try not to visit them if unnecessary. If it is necessary to visit, do wear your face mask, do keep a distance, and maybe even do an antigen test before seeing them. Um, Try to limit your, your outings, try to limit your, uh, your gatherings, do not mix groups and, and hopefully we can all surpass this, <laughs> this wave that has uh, to, to, to taken a long time and taken a toll on all of us in the healthcare system.